Hey friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg and I am the Audiophiliac. This is the Fostex T60RP Planner Magnetic Headphone. It's a honey. It's beautiful. You know, Fostex has been making planner magnetic since I think 1977, the beginning of this series. I think it was called the T20 back then. So long before Odyssey, long before Hi-Fi Man, long before Mr. Speakers, Dan Clark, Fostex has been doing planner magnetics. So they kind of they kind of got it down. And but they're not though Fostex makes very expensive high-end uh, dynamic headphones. Their planner magnetics are not crazy expensive. This model here is uh, $300 in the US. The uh, the T50RP is about 160. They're very similar. But this one has real mahogany uh, ear cups and they are gorgeous and it has real leather uh, ear pads and a real leather headband it feels like a luxurious headphone as $300 headphones go um, and it kind of seduced me it did because I just kept listening to it without evaluating it, without comparing it to other things I just listened and listened and listened and that's a really good sign I wasn't in a hurry to get through this because it was just nice it was nice. It was a nice headphone. The cable, by the way, is detachable, of course, as most headphones are nowadays. It's nice and flexible. It's cloth covered. Again, it feels like a pretty luxurious cable. It's uh, four feet long or one meter for you people in the rest of the world. Anyway, impedance is 50 ohms. Uh, it's a semi easy to drive headphone. I will list all the specs directly below. Comfort was good. It's an easy headphone to listen to for hours at a time, though I did feel the clamping pressure it was a tad on the high side, but I think I'm kind of sensitive to that. Uh, but one advantage to highish, but one advantage to highish clamping pressures is it stays put on your head if you're, you know, you're bopping around to the music. So the first headphone I compared the T60RP to was this one. This is the Sennheiser Mass Drop HD 6XX. Now this is an open headphone, as you can clearly see, an open back headphone over the ear. This one is clearly not an open headphone, although it's considered a semi-open headphone. But anyway, this headphone, mm, I would say it's, it, it sound-wise, the Sennheiser is slightly more open sounding, but not as much as you might think just looking at its design of seeing that driver right there. Anyway, um, this headphone is much darker sounding, less detailed, less, let's say, less clear. Uh, and this one with, the, uh, with this band that I just stumbled over on uh, title, Galactic, and they're from the corner to the block album, uh, which has, they're kind of a funky New Orleans, uh, they, they just got a lot going on. I'm really impressed with them. Anyway, there's a lot of big drums on that record, a lot of big, a lot of big bass, and this guy's bass just couldn't keep up with the Fostex. The Fostex just creamed the Sennheiser in terms of bass. It also creamed it in terms of dynamics and life. Um, <clears throat> This is a very easy headphone to listen to. It is very comfortable, but in terms of excitement and power, the Fostex definitely wins. But this headphone is more tolerant of harsh, over-compressed recording. So when it comes to what's better, well, the better depends on what you want out of a headphone. It's, it's never quite so simple because if you listen to a lot of harsh recordings, <laughs> this one's better. If you listen to a lot of really good sounding recordings, this one's better. So it's, it gets complicated. It just does. With the DACA Daughters, I compare the Odyssey LCD-1, this is also a planar magnetic headphone, an open headphone, to the Fostex. And um, you know what? I, I wasn't sure what to expect when I, when I brought this one out. But you know what? This one is smaller sounding. It is a smaller headphone, but it sounded smaller, less dynamically alive, thinned out the vocals a lot more than I would have liked. Uh, so this was an easy choice. Uh, the, the Fostex definitely blew it. It was just that, that life. I was looking for life. 
meaning a freedom of dynamics. Uh, I could feel the singer's presence more over this headphone than the Odyssey LCD one. Frankly, it was no contest. Yeah, oh, there is one thing. There's always one thing. This headphone is more comfortable. It's lighter. It's smaller. So in terms of comfort, yeah, I think this is a little better. But in terms of which headphone would I grab uh, when I want to listen to music for pleasure, this one. So uh, yeah, I think they really nailed it. The T50, which is still in production, by the way, the T50RP is 160 bucks. So it's about half the price of this one. Unfortunately, I don't have one to compare it against. Un yeah, it's a drag. But anyway, uh, I don't remember falling in love with the sound of that headphone. I reviewed it like, probably seven, eight years ago. I don't remember falling in love with the sound of it like I did for this one. This one has just kept me coming back for more. Uh, but it is like half the price, like, a little more than half, it's $160. But that one feels like plastic. This one feels like quality. So there you have it. Um, oh, so I have this contest going on. Contest, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm still looking for um, audiophiliac reviewers of the day. That is, you make a video review and I, if I like it and it's good, uh, I'm going to run it on the Audiophiliac Daily Show. Now I've already run the first one, which I linked to below, the Tim. Tim reviewed the Crown Amplifier, the XLS1002, and he did a great job. So I'm looking for more entries. Now I don't want you to make a video right just yet. I want you to email me at audiophiliac at mail.com. And I want you to tell me about why you want to do a review. And you're going to review something you already own that's in your system. And uh, take some pictures of your system, of the product that you want to review. Tell me about why you want to review it, some background about you. You don't have to give me your whole life story. It's just an impression I need of you. And if I like what you wrote and I like the pictures, I will contact you and give you further instructions about what I want in a video. So anyway, I don't know how many of these I'm going to run. I, I started with Tim's. I have, I think, at least one more already ready to roll. We'll see. I'm not sure. But depends how good they are. I'm not going to just run them to run them. I'm going to run them if I like them and I feel that this person who made the video, maybe you, uh, has something to say. Because that's what this is all about. If you're a reviewer, <clears throat> well, you have to be passionate about it. You have to be semi-knowledgeable or knowledgeable <laughs> about the product, you have to make it interesting to the viewer. So you have to have some talent is what I'm saying. It's, it's the way it works. I'm laying down the gauntlet. If you want to be a reviewer, this is your chance. This could be your breakthrough. I may discover the next audiophiliac. Who knows? You know, Or the next uh, Herb Reichert. You know, whatever. I want to find the next generation of audio reviewers. So. This is your chance. If that's ever been your, your dream job, I'm giving you a break, I'm giving you an opening. And now I can say, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show, coming to you right now five times a week. If you dig it, hit that button right down there and subscribe. And when you do, hit the little notification bell icon so you'll be notified every time there's an amazing new episode. You can follow me on Twitter at AudiophiliacMan, on Instagram at Steve.Guttenberg. Best of all, by far, my personal favorite is the Patreon at P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Audiophiliac. But while you're here, so you're, be here now, you could check out my playlist. And there's a playlist for headphone reviews, for speaker reviews, for music reviews, and electronics reviews. There's also a playlist for interviews with audiophiles, and there's interviews with designers and famous people in the audio business. So there's a lot to see and hear and learn. Right here, right here on the Audiophiliac Daily Show channel. So, as always, I would say, Right now, something along the lines of thank you so much for watching.
And I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.